Hello, my friends. Jacob is here once again. I'm so happy that you're here. Are you ready? Are you ready? Because I've been getting email after email after email. Jacob, are you going to tell anybody about that, that lady on YouTube? She did the prophecy about all that stuff about the three days. There's three days, Jacob. That's the day after two days, and it's the day before the fourth day. It's darkness, Jacob. What are you going to do? Jacob, there are not one, not two, but three days of darkness upon us. I know a lot of people are freaking out. I know a lot of people are scared. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what the uh, three days of darkness is. I'm going to tell you when it's happening. Yeah, that's right. I got the inside scoop. I got a lot of things. I even have a Uranus mug. If you want to support the channel, best way to do it. No, but seriously, three days of darkness. It's a big deal. It's all over the scriptures, by the way. I did a, I did a video on this. I did a video on this called uh, the, uh, the uh, Ten Plagues. The Plagues of Egypt revealed. That's right, I did it. So look it up. I may link it at the end. I'm not that great with the YouTube stuff. You know, I'm learning. I'm learning as I go. So I may have forgotten to link it at the end. So just do a YouTube search of, uh, of Plagues of Egypt, Jacob Israel Revealed, and you'll see that the three days of darkness are a very interesting thing. A very interesting thing indeed. Darkness is symbolic of ignorance. And people are ignorant today. But sometimes, right? Sometimes people are just in darkness to the truth. Sometimes people are so uh, ingrained with the ways of the world, they forget the one thing that matters the most. Love, peace, joy, hope. Faith. New study actually says that 23% of the people in the world today, 23%, it's a big number. It's like a little Minotti number, right? It's like Jordan's uh, jersey. Ethan would tell me that. He'd also say LeBron James, too. 23, it's a big deal, right? But this new pew, right? 23% of Americans have no religion anymore, right? And people are like, that's a terrible thing. People have lost faith. No, they've lost faith in religion. They're called nuns, right? So on that little checklist, you know, what, what religious denomination are you? None, 23%, bigger than evangelicals, bigger than the uh, Catholics, bigger than everything. And you wonder why, right? I wonder why, let me see. Maybe it's because thousands of priests molest children. Maybe it's because people are strapping suicide bombs on their chest and they're blowing people up so that they can get a bunch of stuff in the afterlife, right? Maybe it's because of that. Maybe you have countries where you have Hindus and Muslims fighting each other. Maybe you have the fact that like almost every war, major war at least, has had some kind of religious uh, you know, start to it, right? Right, religion. You know what it comes from? The Latin word. The Latin word relegare, which means, ironically, to bind, to yoke, to strap you down, to keep you in your place of misery. And that's what a lot of people are in today. That's why drug use is going crazy. That's why people are killing themselves more than ever before. People just want to escape. Well, they're not going to be able to escape the three days of darkness unless they know what I'm going to share. So you better be buckled up, people, because the truth is coming. For the first time, for the first time, welcome back, right? For the first time, I don't have all the answers, right? I don't. God does. God does. The truth is there. All you gotta do is seek it. You'll get, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. For the first time, no religion has topped a survey of Americans' religious identity. That's right. According to a new analysis by a political scientist, they say that the non-religious have edged out the Catholics, who, by the way, celebrating Palm Sunday. And what's Palm Sunday all about? It's about the arrival of the king. They're laying down the palms, right? Six days, right before the Passover, there's the big prophecy where Jesus comes in riding an ass's colt. You know what an ass is? You're looking at it! I can be an ass. According to scripture, a lot of us are asses. Balaam, right, an angel of God, spoke to Balaam, the prophet, through his ass. Sometimes God speaks to us in ways that we can't comprehend because we're, you know, a bunch of beasts, a bunch of animals. That's what the book of Ecclesiastes says, at least, that men don't even know that they're brute beasts. But he comes into town riding a colt's ass. And people are laying down these palms because they know that salvation is come. Ironically, right before that Passover, right before that big deal, right before Easter, right? You have, what do you have? You have three days of darkness. You have that in the Old Testament. Remember Moses? I, I talk about that in my video. Hope you checked it out already. The planks of Egypt is a good one. Okay, Moses, it actually literally means, his name means literally drawn out, to draw out. Egypt uh, is symbolic of our e ignorance. Egypt is this new world order. Egypt is this beast system. 
that we're a slave too. Well, maybe not a slave so much if you know the truth, right? That we are trapped in the darkness of. Well, not so much if you have the light, right? If you put on that breastplate of faith, the helmet of salvation, and you understand what all this means, that you understand that you are in the world, but not of the world. There were three days of darkness in Egypt. Three days. But you see, it actually was a beautiful thing. That's what my video is about. Because after the three days, what happens? The firstborn of all of Egypt, all the beasts, all the insects, every firstborn creature in Egypt put to death. Now, who do you think that firstborn is? It's the idea of who you think you are. It's the, uh, it's the person who can't get ahead. It's the person who never, never feels good about themselves. It's the person that's just too insecure. It's the person that doesn't have love in their life. It's the person that is always broke. It's the person that is always sick. The person that can't get ahead. The person that can't take a step. It's the lame person. It's the deaf person. It's the blind person. It's the dumb person. It's the dead person. It's Lazarus' person. That was the big deal when Jesus was coming in to Jerusalem, which means the teaching of peace. That day when the Christ comes into our heart and starts to lighten the load and starts to open our eyes to the truth, because that is the hope of glory after all. Christ in you. When he, he said, you need me to go away, that day I can go to the Father's house and prepare a place for you. That where you are, there I am too. Within! He rides an ass's colt into town. Balaam had an angel speak to him through an ass. That's right, yeah. God uses the ass to bring forth the truth at times. Riding that ass's cult on into town. All cool, all side saddling. Right before the Passover. Right before that day of darkness. Right before that time when the lights go out. And then the truth finally rises again. That moment when you are in such darkness that you're screaming out, just like Jesus screamed out on the cross, Father, why have you forsaken me? Where you feel like it's all done for, where you feel like there's nothing going your way, where you feel like you're done for. Days of darkness, they come to an end. But right now, it looks like 23% don't have religion. 23% aren't binded by religious ideals or lies anymore. Now, I'm not saying, look, I'm not saying that if you, you go to church, you go to temple, you go to mosque, I'm not telling you any of it's bad. I'm just saying that if you think that where you're going is where you're really supposed to go, you're wrong. Because the truth is already within you. God wants you to go. He says you don't need to go door to door knocking going, you know Jesus, you know the Lord. You don't need to do that anymore. He says because that day, in that day, I will write my laws in their hearts and on their minds. You're going to know the truth. You know, it's, it's there, but you got to seek it. You got to ask for it, right? But you can't ask for it, according to Scripture, unless God draws you, right? Like he couldn't let Pharaoh, he couldn't let Pharaoh, he couldn't let the enemy know what was coming his way. He had to release Israel. He had to get them out of there. You don't think Israel was scared? You don't think they were worried about the YouTubers talking about three days of darkness, saying it's coming upon us? Let me tell you what happened in Venezuela when the lights went out. Where you have uh, United States people forgetting about their faith, people giving up on God, supposedly, right? <laughs> Saying there's no evidence, and yet, evolution, big time lie. Thank you, Jason A, for just, he just did a great video. You should check out his video. About uh, Behe's book. A great book back in the 90s called Darwin's Black Box. This guy's like a scientist. He teaches, right? He's a smart dude. He just wrote a book and it's a bestseller, okay? It's called In Darwin Devolves. He advances the argument presenting new research that offers a reconsideration of how Darwin's mechanism works. Look, the bottom line is we know evolution wasn't, isn't a thing, right? Because we're programmed. Darwin had no idea about DNA. DNA is just, we just learned about this just a little while ago, right? 23. What? Come on, Jacob! you make a connection because that's the news that was the news it all happened in the same day 23 it's a number it's a number there for a reason it's a message God's message within us that's what be he says without saying it somebody programmed us somebody created us somebody created everything to be exactly what it is in his book 
um, Darwin's, I think it's called Darwin's Black Box, right? Uh, he talks about cells being irreducibly complex, meaning an eye cell can't become... <laughs> it's, not, it's not an eye cell. It's Uranus, and it's a planet. And thank you for those of you, a lot of people are buying a cup. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Supportive. It helps, and it'll make you smile. Just like when, when Ethan was grumpy this morning, I just went like this to him. So what you got to do. You have problems with your kids sometimes they get grumpy? Just get the Uranus cup, and it'll also support the channel. And don't forget to share, subscribe, like, do all that stuff. It's very helpful. A lot of people too worried about this uh, three days of darkness. But the darkness in Venezuela is getting people to their knees. Darkness in Venezuela is getting people playing tambourines and having a good time and praising God for the first time in a long time, right? Darkness has a tendency of waking you up. But we're not like those in darkness. Remember? That's what the apostle says. We're not those in darkness, right? We don't let the darkness overtake us because we have the light. We have the truth. We know that whatever is going to come, it's all part of the story, all part of the plan. And, and guess what? I know the end of the story. And the end of the story is salvation. Indeed. And it is also what you make it. Because whatever a person believes, they become. So, you want to know about the darkness? You want to know about the three days of darkness, everybody? <sighs> Egypt, you're in the darkness, right? And if you don't know you're in the darkness, and you don't wake up from the darkness, this is like one of those things. This is what like the prophets of old would do. They'd come in and they'd be like, okay, let me tell you something. You don't get it, but you're all, I just had a dream, and there's three days of darkness is coming. But I see that everybody's, they're walking around, they're like blind people. They can't see. They don't know what they're doing. They're bumping into people. They're doing all sorts of things. And the prophet would come out and he'd say, you got to stop. You got to stop because if you don't stop, it's going to get dark. It's going to get dark. So do I have any inside scoop about whether the lights are going to go out? The lights have gone out <laughs> in the hearts of people everywhere. Okay. And, and I think it's not a, a, a bad thing that you see that people are leaving religion because I hope that they come to Christ to the truth, to the anointing of God, to love. In 1 Thessalonians, it talks about a little bit of darkness, okay? And I want to end with this. But of the times and seasons, nobody knows. For you yourselves know that Christ comes upon you like a thief in the night. You don't know, you don't know when the truth is going to, right, appear. You don't know when you're going to be slapped up inside your head and said, you know what? Here's a little bit more to deal with. Here's a little bit more stress for your life to get you to snap out of it. Here's a little bit more to remind you that your hardships, what you're going through, is there to get you to the truth, to God. That's what God does. He uses all of our infirmities and everything. Right now, I look like I'm all great. You know, I was at the gym before, and I was miserable, and I was in pain, and I was sick because he had to get my attention. And sometimes God uses our infirmities to get our attention, but we're not like those that are in darkness. We got the light, and we know that there's a purpose for it. Because whatever's going to be is going to be. And I'm going to glorify God and I'm going to use every bit of this infirmity. I'm going to use every bit of my pain. I'm going to use every bit of it to help you all find joy. Because I am joyful indeed. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes like a travail upon a woman with child. Think about that for a second. Travail. It's about pregnancy. It's about pregnancy. Sudden destruction. Like travail of a woman with child. That's what this is all about. It's about giving birth to the truth. It's about being set free. It's about breaking free from religare, regulaire, whatever it's called, religion. It's about breaking free. It's about being no longer yoked. You brethren are not in darkness that the day should overtake you as a thief. You're all children of the light, children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do. Wake up, right? Don't be drunken as those that are drunken at night, but let us, who are of the day, listen very clearly. Let us be sober. Think straight. Don't be all scared all the time. Putting on the breastplate of faith. Guard your heart with faith. Know that what you're going through is there for you. Working together for your good. Romans 8, 28, I believe it is. I don't know. I'm not a thesaurus. The breastplate of faith and love and the helmet, the hope of salvation. You see, that's the helmet. Protect your thoughts. Know that you're going to come through this. Know that it's all working together for your good. Know that the Palm Sunday, the palms that they're lying down right now, is in preparation for the King, right? Preparation for the day. Preparation for salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faith of Christ, who knew it's better to love than to hate. 
And I love each and every one of you, and I hope you have the best day ever. Don't be scared of those three days of darkness. If not, you know. Get yourself a flashlight in the meantime. You go over there, Rick Bear. He sells them. I'm going to get one because he, he's a great, he's got a great channel too. Leak Project, such a good guy. I like Rex. I want to go on his show soon. Rex, put me on. Call me up, Rex. I don't know if you have my number, but call me anyway. I love each and every one of you, and I will talk to you soon. Bye bye. Thanks for watching Jacob Israel. Please hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and share this channel around. If these shows have helped you, help Jacob to reach more any way you can and have the best day ever.